I imagine people hearing that might get a little bit kind of freaked out. And they might kind of get a little nervous, like, well, maybe, maybe I got a demon. And how do I know if I got a demon or not? There's a real simple test. And, and so I want to I want to kind of put those fears to, to rest here. But what you can do is, is, is grab a trusted friend, a believer, someone who's, who's mature in their faith. And, and together what you can do is you can pray to ask God to expose if there's been anything demonic in your life and anything demonic that is currently attached to you. And anything that's currently demonizing you. And it will present itself. Either you'll you'll see the demon maybe. Uh, maybe you'll hear something. You'll sense something's going on. Uh, maybe what you can do is, uh, is after you've prayed, have your friend read some portions of scripture, like the Psalms and so forth, large portions of scriptures, particularly the ones praising God. Uh, because it's been my experience that when you read that to the demon, they don't like it. They react strongly. They react negatively. And they can't help it. It's like... It's like nails on a chalkboard to them, you know, times a hundred. It just absolutely infuriates them and irritates them and angers them. And and so what that what that's doing is is it's causing those demons to face what's true and it, it exposes them. And once it is exposed, now you can deal with them. And fortunately, it's not like Hollywood. Right, you know, if, if you, know, you think about how Hollywood talks about the demonic, there's always that nervous priest holding the cross and throwing the holy water, and he's freaking out, begging the demon to go, and that person's spinning around the room and so forth. It doesn't happen that way. And I say that personal experience here. I've I've faced demons. I've talked to demons. They've they've talked to me and told me some choice things. And it's not that way. It is a fight. It is a battle. And it's real, but it's not that sensational battle that we see in Hollywood, right? Now, I'm not a big fan of all the rules I've read about spiritual warfare. Well, you have to say this and you have to do it this way and you even have to say it out loud and so forth. All, all those rules, I, I don't see that happening in scripture. I think what really what we need to understand is that it's actually fairly straightforward in how we deal with them because it's all about authority. The authority that God has given to you and me and then confidently expressing that authority. So in Matthew 16 and verse 19, Jesus says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. You have been given authority over the demons, beloved. God's given to us this, this power in the person in the name of Jesus Christ that now you and I can command and we can cast out the demons. And so when I'm, when I'm working with someone who has been demonic, demonically attacked and demonized, that a demon has attached themselves to them, then, then what I do is I get that person to pray themselves. More than me pray to cast that demon out. If they were an unbeliever, I would do that. But when they're a believer, then I think it's important for them to pray for a couple of reasons. One, it, it allows them to discover the power and the authority that they have. That, that just because I'm a pastor, it doesn't give me any extra power and authority. That we are equal authority, equal power, because we have the same Jesus, the same Holy Spirit. And so it, it encourages and strengthens their own faith. But the other reason is because that believer, or sorry, that demon has attached himself to a believer because it believes that the believer has given them permission. And they, the demons have said, I'm not leaving until they tell me to leave. And so it's important that that, that person prays themselves and commands that demon to leave. And even then, that demon is going to challenge the authority. So let me illustrate it to you this way. Uh, imagine there are two police officers. One, one police officer is the rookie. It's his first day on the job. Right? Uniform all freshly pressed, right? He's got all the creases in all the right spots and everything fits and it's shiny and everything. And his first day on the job is he's got to go and, and look after a, a traffic intersection where the lights are down. And so he's going to control traffic. So he's there and he's got his bright, shiny Fox 40 whistle and his nice white gloves and everything. And he shows up and he blows the whistle, but he's scared. He's nervous. So he blows it very cautiously. It's a very low, quiet whistle. And he Please stop. What are the odds of traffic people, the cars listening to him? They're going to see it and go, uh, I'm not listening to you. They're going to look around and they're going to make their own choices. But now you send in the 25-year-old vet, right? The guy who's got the coffee stains and the donut stains to prove that he's a 25-year-old vet. 
and he, you know the uniform's rumpled and a bit messy and so forth. And he shows up with his you know a little bit rusted you know Fox Forty whistle, but he's got confidence, and he blows the whistle hard and he stop in a very very confident way. And what what do the people do? They pay attention and they listen. Now, who's got more authority? It's the same. They've got the same authority, the rookie and the veteran. The difference is the veteran is confident and the rookie is not. And so the enemy is going to try to, to test how confident are you in your authority? And if you waver in any way, it's going to think, I don't have to leave. I'm going to stay here. But if you are confident and you command it, it will go. And sometimes you have, to, you have to invite angels to come and drag it away even. And sometimes you need other Christians to be praying for you at the same time. Remember those demons where, where the disciples came back and they said, Jesus, we couldn't cast out these demons. And, demon, and Jesus said, some, some are harder. Some require more prayer and fasting. And so I understand that to be that, that you may not be able to just handle it on your own. Some you can, and that's great. And then there's others where you get together other people and they will come and they will pray for you and they will, they will help you. And I want you to know, if that's your case, you have people here ready to pray for you. Myself, the other elders, absolutely. But I know there are more people in New Life because when I look at New Life, I see warriors. I see strong men and women of God who are ready to battle on your behalf, who are fighting for you and will fight for you and with you in prayer. And so all they're waiting for is you to reach out and, and this church will come running. And that's why I'm so proud of New Life, how much they're willing to, to love and support one another.